Hello, viewers, and welcome to American City History. We have moved on to the next state, which is Arizona. We'll be talking about the Arizona cities of Phoenix and Tucson, and in this episode, we'll be talking about Phoenix. Phoenix, which is spelled P-H-O-E-N-I-X, is located in south-central Arizona in Maricopa County. The area had been inhabited by the Hokoham peoples, who dug canals which made the soil in the area fertile. The area was then inhabited by the Pima, Tohono, and Maricopa peoples. Arizona would be claimed by Spain, but Phoenix had no settlements. Arizona was part of Mexico, but was annexed into the U.S. after the Mexican-American War. A, f a few forts were built in the area, but not in Phoenix itself. In 1867, a Confederate veteran named Jack Swilling was traveling from the Salt River Valley in modern-day Phoenix to a town of Wickenburg to become a prospector. Along the way, Swilling noticed that the area he was in had the potential for farming. The Native Americans who lived there had long since vacated the area, and the canals had dried up and become just mounds. Swilling abandoned his ambition to becoming a prospector and realized that he could make a lot of money from growing food to supply Wickenburg. Swilling started the Swilling Irrigation and Canal Company and built canals and planted crops. Swilling booked a farmhouse which served as a landmark, and several more settlers came to the area to farm. One settler named Philip Darrell Dupa suggested that the settlement be named Phoenix to mean a city built from the ruins of a fallen civilization. The county that Phoenix was in at the time, Yavapai County, recognized Phoenix as a town on May 4, 1868. A post office would be established a month later, giving the town more connections to the outside world. In 1870, a new town was constructed three miles west and a grid was set up that is still used in downtown Phoenix today. In 1871, the Arizona Territorial Legislature set up Maricopa County as, a sep as separate from Yavapai County. The town grew in the 1870s and 80s. Telegraph offices, saloons, dance halls, and other buildings were built throughout the town. The town's population reached almost 2,500 in 1880. Phoenix would be incorporated by the Territorial Legislature on February 25, 1881. In 1899, the territorial capital was moved from Prescott to Phoenix, and in, in 1895, the Santa Fe, Phoenix, and Prescott Railway was constructed and made Phoenix a hub for trade in the state. In 1901, a capital building was constructed in the city. In 1902, Theodore Roosevelt passed the National Reclamation Act, which will have dams to be built in the west to reclaim land. The Salt River Dam 1 was finished in 1911 and would create a lake east of Phoenix and supply the city with water and electricity. In 1912, Arizona became a state, and Phoenix was its capital. Arizona statehood caused Phoenix to have a population boom, and in 1920, the population reached almost 30,000. Phoenix's first skyscraper, the Heard Building, would be built. The city grew more. In 1930, the Phoenix Sky Harbor would be built. The Sky Harbor today is the main airport for Phoenix. Phoenix's population grew to almost 50,000. And the, and the end of the 1920s, and grew more during the 30s. The city gained the nickname the Valley of the Sun, which led to a tourism boom. During World War II, Phoenix's economy became one for distribution of war materials, and three Air Force bases, Luke Field, Williams Field, and Falcon Field, were built nearby. Arizona was a major center for training during the war, and most of the people who were trained in the state remained there and built families. The demand for labor led to new industries moving into the city. Motorola, the telecom company, built a research and development center in Phoenix. Intel and McDonnell Douglas followed Motorola and built manufacturing plants in Phoenix. By the 1950s, the city had a population of 100,000, with many more thousands in surrounding suburbs. The city grew much more thanks to air conditioning, making it much less hot. Lots of new construction happened in the city on a huge scale. The city was unfortunately split in two. The north side had lots of growth and was majority white. In one neighborhood, not a single house had been sold to anybody who was not white. The south side of the city was mainly black and Mexican-American and had much less industry. Manufacturing and tourism grew in the 1960s. Several office buildings and residential high-rises were built, and, the, and several tall buildings went up. The Central Arizona Project, which allowed for the expansion of water supplies in Phoenix and Tucson and expanding the agriculture area and the industry helped the state. In the 1970s, the downtown had a resurgence and several new buildings went up that were the tallest in the state. Apparently, Sandra Day O'Connor, the first female Supreme Court Justice, was a Phoenix resident. 
She was confirmed to the court in 1981. In that same year, the Palo Verde Nuclear Generation Station was built on the outskirts of Phoenix and is the largest nuclear power plant in the country. The city grew more in the 80s and 90s. A new town hall was built in 1993. People from several different countries came to the sunny slope area of Phoenix, and by 2000, 43 different languages were spoken in public schools as a result. Phoenix had a huge amount of growth and kept their streak into the 2000s. Phoenix became the second fastest growing metropolitan area in 2007, only behind Las Vegas. The city was one of the hardest hit cities during the 2008 recession. The city was able to recover and crime rates fell. The downtown grew in Phoenix has recently become the fastest growing city in America. I hope you enjoyed this video.